Hey everyone. We're here for gratitude practice number 16. I've been very inconsistent, but I'm here, damn it. How are you today? Oh, take a deep breath. Come into the now moment with me. This gratitude practice is going to be about the body. And so my question to you is, do you use Snapchat filters? I don't even know if I'm looking at the right place. I'm like, where is the lens? <laughs> I want to look at you, okay? Do you use Snapchat filters? I'm so curious. Tell me in the comments. Do you get Botox? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. There's no judgment here. I'm just curious. I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna get a feel for the audience. Do you use Botox? Do you? Let's see. What else? That's really. Those are the two main things that I feel like I want to lean into right now. Why? Why? You know, I was looking back at some of my photos on Facebook. These memories pop up, right? And I used to use Snapchat filter, like a Snapchat filter, like the most dim filter that you can find, like the most subtle, subtle, that's the word I'm looking for, the most subtle filter that they have. But even the most subtle filter on Snapchat is like wipes your face out. And I'm like, why? Why did I do that? You can't see Monica in there. And then I got to thinking about like, who am I trying to look good for? What am I trying to prove? Why am I not embracing the wisdom that is within these wrinkles? Why am I not walking the walk <laughs> that I need to be walking in order to empower women to embrace their truth, to embrace their beauty in all of its fullness? And then I think about when I was 20, you know, like this beautiful, pristine skin, but I was 20. I didn't have this wisdom within my lines and my wrinkles, within my breasts that have nourished three children. I didn't have all, I didn't have that wisdom. I was a baby. I was a baby 20 year old. And that was perfect then. But why do we resist the natural aging process of our bodies? Because if you know anything about creating your own reality in quantum physics, what you resist persists. And so when we go shoot up our forehead with Botox, it's only going to hit us harder in the future. <laughs> because are you really going to do that shit all your life? At some point, you've got to let the botulism go, right? At some point. And I say it in jest, and I really don't want to judge. You know, we all are where we are, and if that is something that feels aligned for you, you're on your journey, and you get to choose that, and I get to love you fully in that. I just am really opening the door to reflect to all of us, including myself. You know, to look at, like, what is it within us that wants to catfish everyone, <laughs> Right? I said goldfish earlier, like wrong term. Like we're catfishing ourselves. Why? And when I look back at these pictures where I've used a Snapchat filter, I'm like, I can't even see the real Monica that was the Monica of that moment. She looks fake. I fucking catfished myself. <laughs> now I don't, I didn't always do that in the past. Like I have natural photos, but I kind of, it's kind of absurd to me when I look at it. And you know, when I'm like sitting here doing this live, um, I would be lying if I told you that I didn't turn, you know, go to go live and I see myself and I'm kind of like, oh, what, you know, what needs to be fixed? Nothing needs to be fixed. And until you see yourself as perfect, the external world will never see you as perfect. And so in this gratitude practice today, we are going to tap in our own divine perfection because we are all perf perfect, perfect, no matter what avatar we chose. Thin, chubby, tall, short, doesn't matter. We are all perfection. We all chose our avatar for a very specific purpose with very specific intention with a very specific mission. And we get to fully embrace that. And so what I'm gonna encourage you to do 
drop me some words for our water. I'm going to open it up. Let's take a deep breath. Ah, oh, breathe some life. I can't talk. <laughs> breathe some life into this beautiful water. Ah, as we code it. And then we'll see what it turns out to be with our co-creation, our collective frequency at the end of our 28 gratitude practices. Okay. But what I'm going to encourage you to do is, I'm going to leave that lid off, is when you look in the mirror, instead of looking in the mirror, what do you focus on when you look in the mirror? Tell me in the comments. Do, you, do your eyes immediately go to the perfection in your face, you know, maybe it's your beautiful eyes or you have beautiful eyelashes. Maybe your lips are luscious and plump and beautiful. Your teeth are nice and straight. Do you go to the perfection or do you go to that one fucking wrinkle that you can't seem to get rid of? Or do you go to that one line next to your eye or that one, maybe you have a little scar on your face. What do you go to? I'm curious. Seriously, tell me in the comments. When you look in the mirror, where do you look first? Because most people go to the imperfection. What if we flipped that? Imagine how your life would transform if every time you looked in the mirror, you looked ex directly at what you feel is your perfection. That aspect of you that you love, there's got to be at least one. There has to be at least one. I'm going to encourage you to Look directly at that every time you look in the mirror. Don't go to the wrinkle. Don't go to that stubborn spot, that pimple that always comes back. Don't look at that. Look at the perfection and love it because what's going to happen is you get what you look for. This is the reticular activating system within your brain. You get what you look for. You always get what you look for. And so when we start looking for the perfection within us, on us, around us, we get more perfection. We get more Light and love is what we get. It will shift the, the way that you perceive yourself. It will literally shift your human body. So I want you to think about how often do you focus on your body's health? Is it only when you're unhealthy? Do you love your, do you focus attention on your stomach only when your stomach hurts? Most people, because we are beings that have survival instincts only focus on the negative, what needs to be fixed, what hurts. We don't give it gratitude in its perfection, in its healed state, its perfect healthy state. And so we're going to tap on loving our body. We're going to tap on loving our body. Um, I do have a funny story for you about these earrings. Not these specific earrings, but earrings like this. Let's start by tapping on our head, okay? Tap on your head. Um, so a friend of mine, deep breath, has earrings that are similar to these. Her name's Kristen. She's one of my besties. And, um, she was wearing her earrings. Okay. Hold on. I didn't know this part yet. Let me back up. So my friend Kristen called me one day and she was like, Monica, she called me cause I'm like her witchy friend. I love that she called me. And she was like, I just had a crow like attack my face. <laughs> She said, I was sitting outside and this crow literally came and like came at me and I look over and he's sitting right there staring at me. And she's like, what does that mean? And I'm like, well, you know, look up, you know, the spiritual meaning of the crow or whatever. Well, then like an hour later, she was like, Monica, that crow attacked me because I had feathered earrings on. <laughs> I see you, mom. Tap with me. Tap your head. Um, so she's like that crow came after me because of my earrings that I was wearing. But I was like, well, you're right, Kristen, but you chose, right? It's always like this divine web of creation, right? Like she chose to wear these earrings on a day that the, a crow happened to be near to see her and land on her. So there's always a message there, message there for us because it's all us, right? You are everywhere, all at once, everyone, all the time. Like it's you, it's you teaching you always. I just thought that was a funny story. Every time I wear these earrings, I think about Kristen in her eye. If you're just now joining, start, ta start tapping. You can't mess it up. Just start tapping. Um, but every time I wear these earrings, I think about her and I'm like scared to go outside. <laughs> 
I'm scared to go outside of my feathered earrings because I don't want a crow to attack my face. <laughs> you never know. Or shit, we have bald eagles around here. Right? So, wouldn't that be wild? Ouch. Deep breath. <sighs> okay, now, outer eye. If you're just joining, you probably see in the title, we're tapping on really loving our physical body, loving our physical body into health. Not just loving the parts of us that are aching, that are screaming for us, right? Because the physical body is always giving us signs, like what needs to be healed. First, it comes up as a little teeny tiny ache, right? And then if we don't pay attention to that, let's be fully transparent, that shit could turn into cancer, right? So we get to focus on the physical body now as it's calling us with our little aches and pains. We get to focus on our physical body now in its wholeness, in its health, in order to create more health, joy, vitality in our physical body. Deep breath. <sighs> Under the eye. Smile. Okay, now, what I would like to invite you to do, you can just tap if you want to, but what you might feel called to do is to think about the best part of your body. Like, what is the part of your body that you love? The part of your body that you've always, always admired. There has to be at least one of them. And why are we doing this? We're doing this because what you focus on grows. You get what you look for. So if you're focusing on the parts of your body that are vital and healthy, that you love, even if it's within the physical appearance of your body, you're going to get more of that under the nose. And so maybe you've got a lush booty. Maybe you've got a really nice booty, <laughs> right? Maybe you've got great biceps. Maybe you've got great lips or great, like I love my eyelashes. So I'm just gonna think about my eyelashes, okay? Now go down to your chin, deep breath. And just, let's be playful with this. This, this healing stuff doesn't have to be so damn heavy, right? Focus on that part of you, that juicy booty, the nice biceps, those beautiful eyelashes. And I just want you to love it. Like smile. Love that beautiful part of you that you have always admired. Like that one part of you that you've always been like, damn, I've got a nice such and such. And you know what? If you can't access that, if you don't feel like you have any of that, then make it up. Make it up. Fake it till you make it. There really is something to that. There really is. Deep breath. Ah, smile and say, if you feel called, I am so grateful for, and it, it, you know what? And this may feel shallow to you. Like, honestly, right now, I'm about to say I'm so grateful for my eyelashes and it feels a little shallow. <laughs> go down to the bottom of the rib, find the nipple, go straight down to that part of your rib that sticks out the most and tap both sides. I'm feeling a little shallow, loving my eyelashes, but you know what? We came for a physical experience. I, it is okay to love your lashes, okay? Because long eyelashes are a sign of vitality. You know, a nice, ripe, luscious booty, strong biceps, just to give you a few examples, it is a sign of vitality. And we get to love all parts of ourselves. And you know, we get to lean into that human aspect of us as long as we don't allow it to take us over. It's freaking okay. Mom, I see you. You do have lovely eyelashes and a beautiful face. Thank you, mom. You're going to make me blush. Uh, oh, mom. <laughs> I love you. A stranger chased me down the other day to say I was really pretty. Oh, my gosh. I love you. She get it from her mama. <laughs> That's a song, right? You know that song. Maybe you know that song. All right. Deep breath. <sighs> okay. Now we're going to reach underneath the armpit. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, babe. I see Lori. I see a few other people popped on. I love you all so much. Let's just laugh and be lighthearted. And we're just tapping under the arm and know that this entire time, this whole tapping, whether we're saying anything, it's all a transmission. It is all a transmission. We are recoding our body in order to experience more joy, abundance, love, vitality in our life. You don't have to say a word and tapping still works. We're releasing all of the old gunk. It's like a clogged pipe is what I see it as, right? We can turn on the faucet, which is source. But if our pipe is clogged, we can only access so much of that light. And as we tap, we open up that clogged pipe so that we can access more vitality, 
more source, light, and love, like, right? Mother, Father, God, whatever resonates with you, that vitality, that prana, life force energy, we get to access more of that as we clear the vessel of old trauma and allow ourselves to be worthy, right? It's one thing to say we're worthy, but like to embody the worthiness to allow to ourselves, our bodies to hold more joy. Deep breath. <sighs> okay, now let's let's do our um, let's do right here inside of the wrist. Deep breath. I'm like sweating. Oh, question. So my mom and I were just talking before I hopped on live, and I hope I hope you don't mind that I share this, Mom. But I don't think of mine, so I'm just gonna share it, and you can shoot me later. <laughs> um, so I'm curious what your what y'all's experience has been um, in your dream time. So I, a couple nights ago, had this like crazy, crazy, all over, like sweaty, sweaty, sweat, sweat. I woke up, <laughs> sweaty, sweaty, sweat, sweat. I woke up, she said it's cool. Okay, thanks mom. I woke up like with crazy night sweats. And the last time I had this, I think I had like the flu, maybe the V, you know, I don't know. Uh, but it's been over, well, well over a year since I have had any sort of night sweats and I woke up drenched in sweat and um, I did not prompt my mom on this. She shared with me that she had woke up drenched in sweat a few nights ago, like a couple nights in a row. And I was like, oh my God, I did too. And I just had a friend who I was communicating with earlier and he said the same thing again without prompting. He was like, I woke up with night sweats like three nights in a row. I was like, oh my God, I had the night sweats one night too. So I'm curious. Has anyone experienced that? Okay, go to your thumb because there's a lot of deep breath, a lot of deep breath because there's a lot of like dream time work. We have no clue what we're really doing in our dreams right now. And this shift from the old earth to the new earth is like the split is like really happening. And so let's talk about, go to your finger, let deep breath. I want you to try to deep breathe every time we move to a spot. I'm going to try to remember you. I want you to think about uh, 2020, what was going on around this time. And I'm not going to drop the verbiage because I don't want to get blocked in the algorithm. But you know what was going on. It was like the great hoax, okay? Um, and think about where people were. You had people literally operating on two completely different timelines. Go to your middle finger. Deep breath. Some people were dying, literally, right? Some people were experiencing the deepest loss of their lives through their family members going. Some people were losing their jobs, right? Like devastating circumstances for many people under the pink or under the ring finger. Deep breath. But then you had other people who were literally catapulted into their dream life forced into their dream life. That would be me. I was one of those people because I was an RN and there was no way that I was staying in that system. It was like the band-aid was ripped off of that system, wasn't it? Everything was exposed. Well, not everything, but a lot was exposed. Okay, now go to the pinky. And I want to, I want you to think about where we are right now. Then, I mean, that was one of the great shifts of humanity huge, huge shift. If you look at the astrology, the numerology, all of it, big, 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 big shift for humanity and for the planet. Let's go to the side of the hand, deep breath. And we're seeing a uh, similar powerful astrology, numerology, and look what's going on. Big, big, wild, crazy shift. Like now is the time to do extra breath work. Now is the time to tap. Now is the time to do your kundalini yoga practice. Get outside, get in the water, do the things like wake up in the morning. And even if you're working, you know, a nine to five, you can still wake up in the morning and ask yourself, ask your soul, what can I do today to bring myself love, to show myself love? Because I was able to do it as a nurse, as a nurse with three kids, a solo mom. I was able to fit it in because you fit in the things that you prioritize. End of story. I just woke up an hour earlier every morning and I would fit it in. Deep breath. <sighs> okay, now let's go to our heart. 
tap around on the heart space. Deep breath. Ah, okay, now, now let's go to, is there any part of your body right now that's screaming at you? Like, has this tapping brought up any pains in your body, any tightness, maybe in your shoulders, maybe the conversation around the timeline, splitting, the, the 2020 occurrence, what's going on now with all of the stuff going on with, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say, you know what I'm talking about. Um, maybe that's triggered you in some way. Like, where do you feel that? Do you feel that in your womb? Do you feel it in your hips? Do you feel it in your chest? Do you feel it in your shoulders? Or maybe you have a, a pain that you've been resisting in your body. Maybe you have an ailment that you've been resisting in your body that you've been fighting with your body about. I want you to breathe into wherever that is. Close your eyes, tap around your heart space, breathe in. I want you to breathe in light. You don't have to see anything. You don't have to feel anything. It's all about intention. All you have to do is set the intention. Just say it. I'm breathing light into fill in the blank. Breathe it in. Smile. Open your chest. Drop your shoulders. Let it flow. Let the light flow into that space. And invite the energy to move differently. Energy gets stuck. Energy is habitual. We know this by the way that the cyclical nature of life works, right? How often do you feel like you're stuck in a rut? You wake up in the morning, you get up, you do the same thing, you go to work, whatever, you come home, you hang out with the kids for a minute, you eat dinner, you go to sleep, you get up, you do it again. Like it feels very monotonous, doesn't it? Doesn't, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it feel monotonous? <laughs> Oh my gosh, just laugh with me. Deep breath. Oh, well, this happens with our body too, right? This is why we hold on to things. Because the energy, it's like that micro-macro energy. Your cells get stuck in the same energetic pattern if you don't give it a pattern interrupt. And so we are literally, it's one of my favorite words, <laughs> giving your body a pattern interrupt. We're inviting our body to move in a different way, the energy within our body to move in a different way just by tapping, y'all. It's so freaking magical. It seems so simple. And maybe you think I'm batshit crazy by thinking that tapping on these points on my body is going to change anything. And if you think it's crazy, say it. This lady's crazy. This isn't going to do anything. This is not going to change anything for me. You don't ignore the feeling. You lean into the feeling, let it be felt, and allow it to shift. And then what happens is you actually get to start experiencing something different in your life. It enhances your belief in the power of EFT tapping and these other energetic and uh, nervous system supportive practices that we're doing, and it happens more quickly. The shift happens more quickly for you. Deep breath. And I want you to go down to your rib. Remember, find your nipple. <laughs> go down to that, that bottom rib that's jutting out the most and tap on one side or both sides at the same time. Damon, I'm looking forward to moving toward my dreamland as 6A-10. I fucking love it. Thanks for the stars, man. I appreciate you. I love it. Deep breath. <sighs> and what you're going to find, too, as you tap, even if you're just showing up for these tapping practices that I try to do every day, um, but I've been kind of inconsistent, so just pop on every once in a while and you'll see one here. You can scroll back. There's at least 15 others here for you. Um, even if you just show up you know, for 15, 20 minutes, I'm telling you, you're, gonna, you're going to release the tension and the um, constriction around all of the things in life that you're holding on to that we get to let go of. And you're going to find a, a way to be playful about it underneath the arm. Reach underneath the arm where your bra strap would sit. Tap on both sides or just one side. You can hug yourself if you want or just reach across and tap on one spot. Deep breath. <sighs> and we get to be playful with it. That's what I'm learning here is that um, all of these energies are calling us to really be playful in creation. You know, whether it's money, money, mo money, 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 you know that song? 
<laughs> I love that song. I remember my kids or my kids, my parents rocking out to that song when I was a little kid. Um, but like we get to be playful. Life is so heavy and blah, you know, like it can just get so difficult and hard and dude, we're the only ones making it hard for ourselves. And listen, I'm guilty, okay? Ask my mom. Like, I call her sometimes and I'm a hot mess express over here. Like, ah, I'm really struggling today. I need my mom. <laughs> Deep breath. <sighs> okay, let's go. Now we're going to finish up with, we're going to kind of do one more round here. Go to the inside of your wrist. This is a heart point, okay? So we're working with the meridian system, okay? Everything is energetic first. And so all of these meridians are not only energetic like heart cords that are woven through our energetic body. They are actually woven through our veins. They have done studies where they have taken dye and shot it. Like, I was not that person like, shoot me up with dye and put me in an MRI. No, thank you. But there were lovely souls who volunteered for that. And they actually would shoot dye into their bodies. And this dye... You know where it would migrate? It would migrate to the vein and artery system that would literally light up the meridians. So they could see that, yes, meridians are not only energetic, they're also a physical expression within the body. Like it's a physical thing. And, you know, any energetic person would laugh at you if you tried to tell them that the meridians weren't also a physical thing because we know that things are always energy first. It's like manifestation. Go to your thumb. It's like manifestation, right? Pee 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 pee. <laughs> I can't right now. See, I'm being playful. People, people, okay? Uh, now I lost my train of thought. Um, I literally have no idea what I was just about to say because I just made myself laugh like a little kid. Deep breath. Uh, oh, manifestation, okay? Uh, people will poo poo. <laughs> People will poo-poo manifestation and be like, oh, that lady's crazy, you know, like manifestation, that's bullshit. Okay, yo, do you know anything about quantum physics? Like even traditional scientists are like embracing quantum physics because there is so much truth. Go to your finger right here, deep breath. Everything is energy first. Thoughts turn to reality. Words are spells. Everything you think, everything you speak, everything you watch, the people you engage with, all of that energy turns into reality. It comes into the physical. You are calling electrons, go, to in, go here to the middle finger, deep breath, to come together as physical matter. What we focus on becomes reality. Deep breath. And now let's go to the bottom of the ring finger, deep breath. And all of that reality across all space, time, and dimension, across our lineage, it all stores in our nervous system. That's what we're working with right now. We're inviting our nervous system into a new experience. It gets to be simple. Now let's go to the inside of our pinky finger. Um, I don't even know how I found EFT tapping. Deep breath. I think I found it on YouTube. Randomly. Though nothing is random. I think I found it on YouTube. And I was like, what the actual F is this? But I'm a, like, I'm a science geek. Okay? Go to the side of your hand here. I, I'm, a, I'm a nurse. I didn't grow up a science geek, though. I actually didn't become a nurse until I was, like, in my 30s. Which is kind of crazy. Um, barely lasted 10 years in that field right? Uh, so glad that I'm a holistic nurse now and not a bedside nurse, but I found it and I was like, dude, this is real. Like this is, there's real science behind this. I didn't need the science cause I am a woo woo person and I do trust and believe and have massive faith. And Lord, if I had not had faith throughout my life, I'd be a freaking puddle on the side of the road right now. Definitely wouldn't be sitting here before you doing my like soul mission work. Deep breath. But it is freaking magical. Like you can manifest very specific things in your life through EFT tapping. Okay. So 
Now we kind of did, obviously I'm using a lot of creative like leeway in these gratitude practices. I'm just kind of channeling from my soul what comes through because that's how I roll. Uh, but So I'm going to invite you into another practice that's a little bit straying, um, but maybe not because you may want to manifest something specific around your physical health. Let's go to the top of your head. Um, let's, I want you to think of like, what is something, and I'm going to give you a challenge, okay? What is something either physical with your body that you want to change or what is something that you want to manifest, something like tangible that you want to manifest in your life? And it could be like um, a flock of cardinals. It is called a flock, right? I don't know. Anyway, um, it could be like, you could even say like, I don't know, a blue Corvette. Like to even something as simple as like seeing it drive past you or like a yellow Corvette because I think that's probably less common. I don't know. Blue's not very common Corvette either, but just pick something. Okay, let's play with the field here. Okay, let's play with the field. Um, pick the thing. I want you to tap on it. So uh, when you wake up every morning for the next like five days, okay, if you choose to take this challenge, I want to invite you to wake up and tap for five minutes on the thing that you want to manifest for five days. Now, um, I would suggest that it not be something too far outside of what you think is possible, right? Like a million dollars, I don't know. And maybe that's not too far outside of what you feel like you could really manifest at this time. Um, but maybe it's like a hundred bucks or maybe it's 500 bucks. Maybe it's 50 bucks. Pick it. And think about it right now as you're tapping. I don't want you to tap all over your head. Think about it. I choose. Choose, choose. We're choosing, right? Like we're choosing to call something into our life. I choose to invite, fill in the blank, into my experience. Now go to the inner eye. Say it again. What do I want to manifest? Um, hmm. I choose to invite, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manifest a new team member. I choose to invite a new teammate into my business. Deep breath. Now go to the outer eye. Say it again. I choose to invite, fill in the blank, I choose to invite a new teammate into my business. Deep breath under the eye. And I say it again. I choose to invite, fill in the blank for me. It's going to be a new teammate into my business. Deep breath. Under the nose, I choose to invite, fill in the blank, a new teammate into my business. Deep breath. Chin. I choose to invite a new teammate into my business. Deep breath. Okay, now. We're going to end. I want you to go to your chest. And I'm just going to use one hand because I don't want to hit my mic. But we're going to do the gorilla tap here. Okay? Um, and say, now we're going we're gonna to shift this into uh, the past. Like it's already done. I am so grateful that I chose to invite, fill in the blank, a new teammate into my business. So we're speaking about it as if it's in the past tense. We're making it a choice to, to bypass like the subconscious that would give us all the reasons why that's not our thing. That's not going to happen. And we're doing it while we're tapping. Like we are, this is like manifestation on steroids is what it is. When we're opening the heart chakra, opening the heart chakra as we're tapping here. Deep breath. Ah. Okay, now I want you to slow your tap, relax your shoulders, open your chest. Ooh, okay, Bradley. Oh, thank you for the stars. Okay, I choose to invite harmonious expressions of uplifting intellect, believing in loving creations. Ooh, I got chills. I think that you are like so magical with the words. That is so beautiful. He's a writer for sure. Deep breath. Ah, I see you, Tracy. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now I want you to feel the vibration 
that you've created in your body. It's 644, 645 now, but okay. I want you to soften your shoulders, open your chest, be heavy to your seat. Smile. Even if you don't feel like smiling, smile. Now you may feel like you want to go back and do this again. That was for the most part, except for the end, a pretty non-specific, right? We got a little specific and then we were non-specific. Listen, you can't mess it up. You can't mess it up. You can tap, not say a freaking word and something is going to shift for you. Sometimes tapping without words is even better because you allow the field to shift what needs to shift. Your body innately knows what your body needs to shift, right? Your, the bigger part of you, your super conscious self, your soul, your, your inner being, whatever you want to call that bigger part of you, whatever you want to call it. When we tap, we allow that bigger knowing, that bigger part of us to shift in the field and in our physical body what needs to shift. Okay? I guarantee you. I guarantee, I guarantee you. Guarantee, you start tapping every day for five minutes, you will experience a shift in your life. Guaranteed. 100%. So if there's something specific that you want to shift, something specific that you want to manifest, tap on it. Tap on it. It will come, it will come to fruition. And then, again, when you build that belief that it actually works because you're going to start seeing the tangible results, it's going to happen more quickly. I'm telling you all, I need to start keeping a list of what I tap into my life because it's freaking mind blowing, heart expanding, freaking amazing. Okay. I love y'all so much. And if you're looking for a shift, if you're calling in money to make an investment in order to be able to access the shift, tap on it you will tap out of scarcity and you will tap in the resources the resourcefulness the creativity that is necessary to access that which you need that which you desire in order to make the shift in the 3d okay i love y'all so much tracy have you ever found that tapping caused physical pain or swelling um Physical pain, yes. So I've never had anyone specifically say to me that I've, I'm swelling because of tapping. I'm curious where specifically that is. Um, it is, uh, sure, it could definitely happen because it's going to cause a shift in, in the shift in your body that you need in order to stabilize. And so what can happen is this is my nursing this is the nursing coming through, right? Is that your body has fluid that sits in certain spaces, right? We have body, we have body. We have fluid inside the cells and we have fluid outside of the cells. And so as our body is moving into homeostasis, sometimes there's kind of that, I don't know, why, why is liminal space coming in? That like liminal space, that in between where your body's trying to figure it out and so that, that you may see that fluid move out of the cell and experience some swelling. Okay, your wrist. Um, were you tapping on your wrist specifically or no? And I guess it doesn't actually really matter. Um, but, you know, you think about your joints, right? So uh, with our legs specifically, uh, the knees are like moving forward, forward movement. And so your body's always speaking to you. So this is what I'm going to suggest to you, Tracy, is that you actually go and look up the spiritual meaning of the wrist. Now, something's coming through here. The other day was the first time I tapped my hand when I was tapping with you. Okay, the, okay, yeah. A lot of people don't go through those points. A lot of people just focus on these points only that are all, like right here. Um, but there's a lady on YouTube. Her name's Sonia Sophia. The tapping, uh, World School of Tapping, I think is what it's called. If you search her, she does, uh, she's more thorough, more thorough. Is, again, you can't mess it up, but she's like, I just like to go through all the points. And it resonated with me, so I like to do all of the points. Um, look up, okay, this is the other thing that's coming through, is you have a, a, very, a specific heart point here. Look up the spiritual meaning of your wrist. 
and do some heart chakra work. Okay, and we think of swelling, right? Like we think of that is something that is related to heart, right? Um, you know, people who, and please don't, I'm not saying that you have this. I'm just, what's coming through is in general, people who have CHF, heart failure, right? They have fluid issues because their heart is speaking to them. Their heart's like, hey, yo, do some heart chakra work. Okay, so do those two things. That's my um, best suggestion for you. Thank you so much for the questions. Thank you for the engagement. This has been the best tapping session so far um, for me. So thank you so much. Okay, heart chakra makes sense. Grief, yes, lungs as well. Your lungs hold grief, right? And so I encourage you, Tracy, if you like feel massive tears come through as you tap, let those tears flow, baby. Let them flow. If you cough, sneeze, like just let it flow. Sometimes the mucus will come up as you're tapping. Let it flow, okay? Um, but you know, it's ironic because I did not feel like going live. And I've had a lot of energy and uh, I felt some grief moving through today and kind of like wanting to cry and being like, I don't really know why I want to cry, but I want to cry. So I'm just going to cry a little bit. And I was like, Ugh, I don't really feel like doing this. And, and my, my, that inner voice said to me, you need to do it. You feel, you know, the, you know, when we feel most like we don't want to do something is oftentimes when, the most that we need to do it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Does that make any sense? You know, it's like, when you need, when your body's like calling you to take the run, but you're like, I don't want to take the run. I just want to chill. But then you go take the run or the walk, or you just get outside and you're like, oh my God, I totally needed that. Right. That's how I felt. So thank you so much. Um, okay. Okay. Tracy, it was the first time that I have tapped my ribs with you too. Okay. Woo. I'm so glad. So glad that you showed up for this. This is perfect, Tracy. All right. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Okay, I love y'all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for the stars. Tell me if you're watching the replay. Um, please, yeah, please tell me, uh, you know, just keep engaging. Keep showing up. I'll be back tomorrow. I love you so much. And if you want to join my group, Water Wizards, if you're not in there, please go in there. There's there. I, I arranged all of these. And sorry about that. Went into low battery mode. Um, but I have all of these arranged in guides inside of my group so you can keep going back to them if you choose to, okay? Oh, I love you, Mom. I see you. I think I have nanny grief. Yes, you do. You definitely do have nanny grief. I do too. Oh, all right. I love you all so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everyone.